13 red flags that you are with the wrong person mm -hmm. right now what is the first one so number one is the relationship with God is not a priority for that person when God is not the most important for that person it's mm -hmm. a red flag mm -hmm. if you are the <coughs> most important person for the person you are with that's, that's a red flag. scary mm -hmm. that's scary mm -hmm. you know I always told even my wife that you know I love Jesus more than I love you and because of that I will love you more every single year as we grow together yeah yeah I think when we understand this truth it's it, it doesn't become scary it actually liberates us mm. and makes us trust that person if when I was single and I was praying um, God would you please give me a husband that will love you more than he will love me mm. and that's exactly what wow. I got and I am so thankful to God that I you know prayed those prayers and I uh, my mindset was correct in this area to understand that a person needs to be attached to God more than anything before he's attached to you so ladies good prayer to pray mm -hmm. instead of saying Lord send me a mr. handsome mm -hmm. send me a person that loves you more than and he I will also love got me. the mr. handsome <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So number, two. number two actions and words don't match that's a big one that's a character flaw yeah and even if that person is in the Lord if what they say and what they do I'm not talking about once or twice mm -hmm. but you're noticing pattern. there's a pattern this person says one thing does another they make promises they don't keep mm -hmm. they keep breaking their uh, yeah. their their oaths their their commitments um, you're dealing with the person that either is immature likes to be admired for the words he says but doesn't have the character to live out his commitments to me it's a huge huge red flag number three um, if she or he has uh, close friends that are not committed to the Lord and I think this one is actually huge because this is how you can actually see with whom that person is more comfortable with mm -hmm. with people who are uh, more secular or with godly people and that's a very huge sign to see who the person is really uh, really is it's important mm -hmm. that we always have non-christian friends but if your closest and your best friends and all of them are not mm -hmm. believers mm -hmm. and you feel very comfortable and you don't seem to click with believers to me that's a huge red, a flag. red flag yeah number four uh, if a person he or a she more of a guy but sometimes <laughs> she has a wandering eye what do you have to say so about that a, a wandering eye it's when the person is constantly it's when a guy is constantly checking out other girls mm -hmm. um, I would add to that also following an Instagram oh yes Ooh, this it. is huge like come on go ladies ahead. I have to say it. it if a if a guy is interested in you I beg you make sure you go through his followers and see everyone who who he is following big big uh, very important <laughs> okay it's it's very important that way you can actually see if a person if a guy is like okay looking at an other girls and he's uh or you can even tell if he has an issue with lust or issue with pornography maybe he doesn't follow like you know porn uh stars on instagram but you can kind of see who you know maybe those celebrities that are half naked and uh, you can tell if the person has issue with lust Some, somebody <laughs> said that he was following a lot of prostitutes on his instagram a wandering eye when he follows instagram models to me i think it's supposed to be a red flag when a believer mm -hmm. a a young man um, man of purity is following female models Mm -hmm. female uh, workout uh, working Absolutely. out um, trainers and because I mean all of the working out trainers I mean it's 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 soft porn pretty much and stuff so I mean mm -hmm. you know whatever you girls can follow but um, but for a guy to follow as uh, somebody with with tight or pants, Hollywood stars yeah, and that, exposing mm -hmm. their their breasts and everything and and it's just to stay uh, relevant mm -hmm. or to oh it's not a big deal I'm just my friends you know <laughs> and stuff so um, uh, to me That's it's just big big big, yeah. big deal I'm not saying that as a girl you should control but you should definitely you, sh you can't ignore that take a note yeah, yeah. You, you, you gotta take a note you gotta uh, you gotta see that because that that is a big sign and so um, 
Number uh, sign, five. sign num- number five. He or she has uh, recently gotten out of uh, a relationship and they didn't heal yet. And so, and this is deals with the person who just broke up recently. Mm. My personal encouragement is for people to take at least six months, six to 12 mm-hmm. months, depending on the depth and the closeness of the previous relationship, especially if the previous relationship ended in immorality or fornication. Like there needs to be repentance, there needs to be um, inner healing, even sometimes yeah. deliverance. And when the person jumps out, the reason why it's a red flag is because you don't really know if the person loves you or if the person uses you as a band aid when they're jumping into a relationship with you right away. What if they say, okay, I just had a a big breakup and this person is giving me this attention and they're helping me to heal. What do you say about that? I wouldn't say that it's always a bad thing. I would consult um, counselors, mentors, to kind of monitor this person's heart because I, I can't say that I know some people who got married like that mm-hmm. and honestly they have a thriving great <laughs> relationship they still had to deal with those issues <laughs> but to say mm-hmm. that that this is healthy or this is wise it is not and so because a lot of times you know you're dealing with this hurt and you're dealing with this thing and then three four five months later you actually have withdrawals and you actually want to go back to the person that you broke up with like and I'll, I'll be candid and honest, I've had a relationship before I met Lana. It was a dating relationship with a, a young gal from, from our church and I broke up with her. Uh, a few months later, I went back to the same relationship. Even though we didn't fit together, it, didn't, it wasn't for me and it wasn't, I wasn't for her. But the emotional attachment. But the emotional yeah. attachment drew it back. The worst thing would have happened is for me to go to another relationship because I would have missed this person and go back. You don't, you know, when you this when you when the guitar stops playing music the strings are not removed just because you walked away it doesn't mean all the strings are gone so it takes time time is the great revealer and so and the person who just broke up or separated please go into a healthy small group go into relationship if you're a woman with other women get a counselor go into church find a good hobby begin to rebuild yourself don't jump into another relationship without learning the lessons that you had to learn you have to learn even if it was not your fault because statistics says your next relationship marriage after the divorce the chances of it end up in ending in divorce is higher than the first one. So the idea that, I, oh, I learned so fast that I'm going to jump into the next relationship is, is actually baloney. Yes. It's not how this works. You didn't learn anything because statistics says that you go back into actually worst case, not better case. And so I would really encourage to take yeah. time to pause and don't jump to be in a relationship with somebody or, like, or for example, going into dating with somebody whose divorce is not finalized. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I think that's a big no. That's just a hundred percent. That's a big no. Oh, we're, we're still finalizing, you know, or it's been it's been finalized. You need to cut the cut the cord. This cord has to be cut. Person has to deal with that stuff first before they go into the next relationship. To me, that's a big red flag. Red flag number six. Number six. A person shows signs of controlling or abusive behavior. This is pretty self-explanatory, but I think it has to be mentioned because a lot of people miss those signs, especially the signs of control. Mm-hmm. I think this is. Um, when a person is controlling, even if it's like already in dating, you can see the signs of control. If a person doesn't like you to hang out with your friends that you used to have, mm-hmm. or a person constantly showing signs that they only want to be with you, only th- you are theirs, you are mm-hmm. their world. This is actually very unhealthy because uh, later on when you marry that kind of a person, you're going to be very miserable. That person will g- will take another level of control and will be, um, sometimes it, it gets out of, out of control. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, as, as well, what I would want to mention is there's a difference between love mm-hmm. and obsessive love. Mm-hmm. When a person has an obsessive love, they don't love you. They are actually having a problem and they are possessing you they are trying to Mm -hmm. control you and that is very very (coughs) dangerous and so we have to be very careful because that becomes extremely toxic at first actually if you have had a problem with you know having Mm -hmm. somebody love you like you will actually fall fall prey to that and you'll be like man this is so amazing I I am wanted I am desired Mm -hmm. and everything but in reality Mm -hmm. it's not when the person is obsessed with you they will become possessive of you Mm -hmm. here are the six characteristics of obsessive love Mm -hmm. obsessive love is when a person cannot live without you 
when a person demands unreasonable amounts of time and when a person ignores the other aspects of their own life to be with you, mm -hmm. when a person shows jealousy toward anything and any activity that compels for your attention, that competes for your attention, when the person follows you, checks up on you when yeah. you're not together, and obsessive love begins with mm -hmm. an intense motion, intense emotion, flattery and, atten and attention, but yeah. slowly yeah. it grows into unhealthy possessiveness of you. Yeah, yeah, that's big. I think love, it's, it's completely opposite. Love always gives freedom, trust, a choice, encourages uh, a person to uh, have relationships, uh, you know, cultivate friendships and uh, even like even cultivate the friendships, create new friendships that, you know, a couple can enjoy together, I would say, the, the freedom. Number seven, uh, the person has the same sin habits, addictions and struggles and doesn't have freedom. Shouldn't we give a, a chance for people who are struggling or, or do you think that uh, when the person, for example, is addicted to drugs, mm -hmm. um, where is the line between, you know, dating them uh, or addicted to pornography or addicted to smoking or addicted to lying or maybe other stuff? Where is the line um, of dating them if they are addicted? So I, the line is you just don't. You, you do not date people who are addicted, who have really terrible habits that will uh, eventually destroy the marriage or a relationship period. That person needs a rehab center, mm. not a relationship. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. If a person especially addicted is addicted person? to alcohol, drugs, that's, that's one, one, or one, one even second, one addiction second. to I'll sex. So uh, a person who is addicted needs a rehab, not, not a, a relationship. relationship. Yes. Oh, come on somebody, drop that in the chat right now. A person but that's because, addicted Yeah, but needs because a they need a rehab, they think they will find their rehab in the relationships. Mm. But it's a very false notion. It's absolutely untrue. That will actually uh, destroy another person's world mm -hmm. and not heal that person who is addicted to mm -hmm. something. Now, if you are in a marriage relationship and you are addicted, you know, we are not saying, okay, uh, dump your spouse right now yeah. and then uh, dump him into rehab. And also a lot of people uh, who are addicted, I feel like they need deliverance and discipline, not dating. Yeah, that's good. On. Drop that mm -hmm. in the chat. If you're addicted, you need deliverance and discipline, not mm -hmm. dating. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you take time to get free. So for those of you who are right now watching and mm -hmm. you're single, please don't feed that addiction. Um, get freedom. Overcome that. Get 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 into deliverance. Um, come to our prayer line and get delivered. You know, go through my prayer line, prayer videos, and get delivered. Experience deliverance. It doesn't mean if you get married, you have to be perfect. You know, we all sin and stumble, but when you willfully, habitually, intentionally continue to sin without repentance, it destroys the yeah. other person. And if kids are involved, it's extremely, extremely difficult and damaging. Marriage is supposed to be a blessing, but you will make it a battlefield. Uh, because of that addiction and it just makes it very very difficult and so mm -hmm. uh, if if you're single and you're dating somebody who is addicted to porn right now and they do not seek deliverance they do not want to put um, any kind of discipline in their own life drop them like a hot potato and run from them like from a plague yep number eight uh, the person doesn't respect purity and has no desire to wait until marriage to have sexual relationship that's huge mm-hmm if from the beginning this person is not <coughs> willing to set boundaries with you and not willing to help you guard those boundaries but they are opposite they're like no i want to make out no i want to have sex or no i want to have all these other sexual activities that are not you know or, intercourse or, or, or anything or some of that. people some guys mm -hmm. they say yes okay yeah i can do that but then they push the envelope they said one thing with their words, but with their actions, they're pushing the envelope of purity. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge red Yeah, state. they're not interested yes. um, mm -hmm. in that. And they are just simply wanting to, um, they, they're just in there not for love, they're in there for lust. Mm -hmm. um, they don't um, love you, they love pleasure. They don't love the person. And, so, yeah. and that is that is a big red flag. If somebody from the beginning says, no, I want to, you know, don't buy a cow if you don't drink milk from it, don't buy a car if you don't test it. If that's their view of sexuality, mm -hmm. um, then you have to present to them, say, hey, listen, um, home slice, um, uh, sexuality is more like a super glue than a milk from a cow or a test driving a car. <laughs> and you don't play around with super glue. You don't test super glue on your finger. 
because it's going to stick. That's why yeah. people develop soul ties, get demons and sexual transmitted diseases, get unwanted pregnancy and so many other things. And sex has to be reserved for marriage. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm going to go as far as to say this. One of the best ways to know if the person really loves you or they want to use you is deny them sex until the altar. Yes. yes. And then you will see. Yeah. If they love you, love is patient. They'll be with you. Yep. If they don't, if they're, they're only lusting, they're, they're going to walk away and find somebody find who will give them else, what they yeah. really want, mm -hmm. which is not, Definitely. they don't want uh, love, they just want lust. Uh, red flag number, number nine. nine, you don't want kids to become like him or her. <laughs> that is a red flag. <laughs> if you're looking at this person and you're like, I do, would never want, I'm not saying that the kids will not look like that person. Okay, because a lot Just of times, become like yeah, because yeah. a lot of things, this is what I realized about guys and girls. Before we get married, we focus on our wants. The moment you get married, you focus on your needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, w before, before you get married, you, you know, you want him to be handsome, you know, you want him to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, rich and everything. Smart when you get dog. married, um, mm -hmm. you want him to be there for you, you want yeah. him to take care of you. You want him to notice Be you. You want him to be responsible. You want all of those things mm -hmm. when you get married. And so mm -hmm. um, that's very, very different. Now, number 10. Number 10, you don't have peace about marrying this person. And this is big. If you're a believer, I think it's a must. It's one of the uh, God-given signs that, uh, you know, the Lord, that person fits you well, is you have to have peace about that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Number, Number 11. 11, your mentors and family feel iffy about this person. Now, if th this one is more if your um, if your uh, mentors and your parents, they are godly people and, you know, you, you trust them in a lot of, of their advices and things like that. And if they don't feel good and they see something further than you see when you like someone, because when you're like, in that infatuation stage, you're kind of wearing those pink glasses. You please, you do need an input from people that you can trust. And many times if they feel iffy about it, most likely they are right. And then and another thing you have to keep in mind is the moment things go bad, mm -hmm. guess who you're going to go to? Those people. You're going to go to your parents. Yeah. You're going to go to your mm -hmm. um, your mentors. So it's important to um, pay attention to uh, the words that they speak. Um, mm -hmm. It is your decision, but it's important <coughs> to pay attention to the words that they speak. Mm -hmm. And number 12, number 12. Uh, being with that person has distracted you from Christ, the church, and your closest friends. And this is huge. I've seen this happen every single time, left and right, where someone gets into the relationships and they are no longer in church. They're no longer, th they're pulled out like a magnet out of the church, out of the fellowship with friends. They're secluded. They're nowhere to be found until they come back broken. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. That is that is so true. And that's one and of the signs. It's, yeah. it's like that obsessive love. It's that infatuation. Mm -hmm. And some people are afraid. They're like, oh, I when I when I fall in love or when I start dating this person, you know, I, I feel like it's a distraction to my walk with God. Like to some degree, you, you will be a, like, there, there is going to be this thing where this person is going to be on your mind. As long as you are still with your church, with your family, and as long as you're still with your closest friends. Yeah. But to some degree, there will be this season where there will be a little bit of distraction. Yeah, so of I course, think it's, it's, it's normal. Don't feel bad about it. They did not become an idol and <laughs> they are not an Isaac that you need to sacrifice. Okay. So like, because I know, uh, and this is when you know you're not mature. Uh, and I always tell people, when you are from 13 to 19 and you still have the teen attached to your age, um, a relationship will always distract you. It's very difficult because you're still not emotionally super mature. And, but then when you hit about 21, 22, your, your level is different. You're thinking not just with your heart, you're thinking with your head, you're thinking with your, con your conscience, you're kind of reevaluating everything. And these relationships, even if they kind of will infuse you with a lot of emotion and love and mm -hmm. thoughts, and, but you'll know that, hey, this is, not, this is a good thing. This is a, th this is not distracting me from God, from the church and everything. But when, when you're a teenager, like it's <laughs> literally like nothing exists. This the, only this person you're thinking living only for them 100 percent. And so that's why I always tell people that do not get married. If you do not date, if you're not ready for marriage yeah. and and don't think about marriage, if you have a teen attached, attached to your age. <laughs> and the last one, number 13, 
you are you're already praying for God to change that person. <laughs> It's funny, but Lord, I love him. But please, can you change him in this Save area him, or Lord. her? Save him, Lord. Yeah. Save him, Save Lord. Him. Don't make him look at other girls. Lord, please help him to stop being lazy and playing video <laughs> games 24-7. Lord, help him to be more responsible. And, and then you're looking for a job for him because he doesn't want to work, you know, like and it's just like it's better to not to bring I always so in final thoughts, I'm gonna share mm -hmm. three things concerning this. Um, it's better to wait for God to bring the right person to you than to wait for God to change the wrong person mm -hmm. that you bring to God. And when I say wrong person, it's when you ignore all the red flags and you still do it because, um, you know, you really are infatuated. It's not that, oh, they are in the Lord and you wish to be with this person as much as you're just ignoring the common sense. You're going against the wisdom of the wise people in your life and you're going against your own peace. Uh, there's tension right there, like in there, but you're crossing all of that because you're infatuated and because you just don't want to miss out. Nobody's going to love you. You will never get another chance. This person is hot. Well, hell is hot. You don't want to date hell. You know, oh, but this person is like so amazing and, and everything and you know, they, they are everything that your ex wasn't, you know, everything that your ex couldn't be. And so like now the fact that they are missing the other 80% that maybe your previous relationship had, you're looking blindly at that stuff, closing your eyes, hoping that they will change. And then you start kind of like going into the relationship knowing that they need drastic like construction remodel in their life, spiritually remodel in their life but you're jumping in and you're hoping that I'm going to pray them out, I'm going to fast them out. Listen, now if you're in that situation already, keep going. Do not give up. <laughs> but if you're not in that situation, Why please don't you? do it. <laughs> yeah. Why would you want to destroy your life like that? Why? When you can spend your life being with the person that can help you to move mountains, establish God's kingdom, where well, you don't have to fight about tongues or cessationism or, or fight about going to church or not going to church. Yeah, where, yeah. where Why would you want to do that yeah. and stuff? It's better to be single and whole than to be married and be in some kind of yeah, an emotional mm -hmm. prison. And so I just really want to encourage you guys, marriage is not that easy um, and, it's, and it's so difficult when you're married with a person who does not share your values, who doesn't have respect for you yeah. and who is chronically narcissistic or controlling, manipulative. Imagine walking with two types of shoes. One shoe has one size, the other shoe has the other size. Like you won't walk mm -hmm. for very long. Mm -hmm. Imagine running like that. It's uncomfortable. Now, can you still do it? Yeah. So people sometimes look, oh, but it's not wrong. The Bible doesn't say it's wrong. No, it's not wrong. But the question I want to ask you, is, is it wise? wise? Is it wise? Is this the best thing for your future in light of your past, in light of the calling, in light of the advice that you received from your mom and dad, in, in the light of the peace that you don't feel in your heart? Your God says, run. Your God says, you're making a big mistake in light of all of that. Is this the wisest decision? So yes, the Bible tells us they have to be in the Lord. The Bible tells us you can marry at liberty whom you wish, but the Bible is also a book of wisdom. Yeah. And the Bible gives yeah. us people yeah. like Vlad and Lana, like your mom and your dad, gives us other people who walk alongside of us and say, hey, mm -hmm. you don't, don't camp at it's not wrong. <laughs> Move to the side that it's wise. Now, the other um, two, two final thoughts that we want to give him is don't be blind to what you're seeing during dating as we mentioned. Spoon food in dating is tons in marriage, meaning ah, it's just a little problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> in marriage, it's going to be a big. big problem. Whatever is in dating usually gets magnified in marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like if this person is not clean, they are not going to get clean because they're going to get your last name. If this person is not punctual, I can tell you one thing, marriage vows does not, has never changed anybody to be punctual. And so like just, just remember, you know, don't be blind to what you're seeing right now and don't hide it under a carpet because it's not going anywhere after the wedding. And the third thing is that, you know, I mentioned before you get married, we seem to focus on what we want. When we get married, we begin to more focus on what we need. We need yeah. 